the Rashi on Vayishma et HaKol raised the possibility of the voice being a silent whisper, a kol namuch, which is then rejected on the basis that the text states Vayishma et HaKol. The Sicha approach to Rashi is that each component of Rashi's commentary is precise and therefore nothing extra is added without purpose. Question 3 argued that the entire second half of this Rashi would appear to be irrelevant to the interpretation of the word Hakol, where Rashi states with respect to this voice that Ukushimagia lepetach that upon reaching the entrance of the Ohel Moed, the voice intensity went down to zero decibels. In the words of Rashi, Haya Nifsak, V'lo Haya Yodze Chutzla Ohel, and the sound was not able to be heard outside of the Ohel Moed. At face value, this component has very little to do with the definition of the word Hakol. The justification of this addition to Rashi is that it has been included to respond to a second difficulty. And that difficulty lies in the wording of the Pasuk that states, Ubevo Moshe El Ohel Moed, the Daber that Moshe needed to come into the Ohel Moed for the communication to take place. Were the voice communication with Moshe to be a kol namuch, then it could be argued that there was a need for Moshe to come into the Ohel Moed. Normal voice does not travel great distances. But we have just established a number of points. Firstly, that it was hakol, a voice on par with the intensity of the sound heard in Matan Torah. Secondly, despite this intensity, the voice was Vayidaber Elav, heard by Moshe, not by Aharon. We are clearly dealing with paranormal situations, otherwise known as Nisim. Once we have introduced the possibility of Nisim, then for all intents and purposes, the communication did not necessarily need to be linked with the Ohel Moed. In theory, there was no need for Moshe to come into the Ohel Moed in order to receive the communication from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Just as the Hakol, despite its intensity, was not heard by Aharon inside the Ohel Moed, then this same Ness could have been duplicated wherever Moshe happened to be at the time of the communication. Rashi therefore needs to provide further clarification, and for this reason he adds the extra piece of information that Although it was Hakol, high intensity, although it was a love to Moshe and not to Aaron, that voice nevertheless did not extend beyond the walls of the Ohel Moed. And therefore Moshe needed to enter the Ohel Moed to receive that communication. Rashi needs to add this piece of information only because he has reinterpreted the Hakol as a voice on par with that of Matan Torah. Were this not to be the case, in other words, were it to be a kol namuch, then the fact that Ubevo Moshe El Ohal Moed would have been quite understandable.